Coming to you from a ranch property outside of Austin, Texas, where my company is building probably one of the coolest projects I've ever built. What you're about to see in this video is something we're calling mass ply light framing. This is basically gonna be a giant timber framed house, but all the framing, the wood is not traditional wood. It's basically plywood, it's LVL material made specifically for this project. In fact, look behind me here. See that plywood, that LVL material? That's four foot wide, 32 foot long, inch and a half thick. This is kind of similar to uh, what you've maybe seen when you think about a pole barn or pole framing. Uh, it's done a lot in the Midwest. But in Texas, when people big, build big ranch buildings, we sometimes call them barn dominiums, they're often done out of metal framing. This is gonna be so much more interesting. Today's build show, mass ply, light framing. Let's get going. All right, so we're working with a company called Timber Builder. We're gonna introduce you in a, in a minute to my buddy Trent, who's kind of the mastermind behind this type of framing. But what you're seeing here is we've got all the sill plates set on the house. And again, this isn't traditional lumber. This is that same LVL material. Now this is not treated, so we've put a sill sealer down and we've used the detail that Steve Basic gave me a long time ago, I really like, where we put a bead of Sashko's Lexel down first, sill sealer, another bead of Lexel down. And then you're gonna notice that all these hold downs here are Simpson drilled. These are Titan HDs that we've used their gusset plate on top so we can really spread out that force. We've got a fair amount of wind load here, so the engineer put these on a probably a, a more uh, aggressive schedule than you might see in kind of typical residential construction. But we're just about to frame the very first wall. Let's show you how this process is done. All right, y'all, let me introduce you to my buddy Trent Depth. Trent, uh, this is looking unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Unbelievable. So I, I told these guys at the start of the video that this is mass ply light. You kind of coined that phrase. Let's walk them through the process. Let's start at the very beginning. We put our bottom plates down. All the Simpson hold downs are in place. Mm -hmm kind of looks like a traditional bottom plate, but then everything from there on Just up- Just beefier. Doesn't look traditional no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, we, we lay the, each wall section out on the ground for the exterior walls. Yep. Uh, we start with the columns, and then once the columns are, are on, we fly the panels, and that's the inch and a half LVL panels. Gotcha. Um, we fly those in and, and affix those to the columns, cut out our window penetrations, put our window bucks on, well, then we put our WRB, put our window bucks on, and then we flash the windows, install the windows, put the rock wool on, put the rain screen on, and then fly them into place. Nothing to it. We could probably stop the video there, right? You guys <laughs> totally get it now, right? Super easy explanation. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying. Let's, uh, let's walk this way and talk about it. So tell me, first off, Trent, the components that are involved, because these are big components. Yeah. I showed them the ply that's that inch and a half ply that's 30, what is it, 32 feet? We had the, a huge 32 here foot by, by four foot, yeah. 32 by four. This is all from Freeze Lumber yeah. uh, in Oregon. So that's that's what makes up the majority of the wall that you're seeing. Right. And then how often are the columns spaced? Uh, approximately every eight, eight feet. Okay. So we have a we have a little bit of a, a wiggle room in there as, as far as where they have to be located, yep. but it's about every eight feet. And then at the columns, you have a specific Simpson hold down. Is that mm -hmm. a special product? Is that what we'd normally use? And so that's kind of the theme that we've been doing for the whole project. We wanted to make sure we had fasteners and connectors that we could get from any lumber store or big box store. Yeah, so all the Simpson hardware we've got, you could order that from any of your builder's four source locations or other places as well. So when you look at this wall panel, Trent, I'm seeing a corner piece and then I'm seeing a bunch of screws. That's one big wall section from bottom plate all yep. the way to the bottom of the roof. That's right? correct. And so the window bucks, you're making those plywood bucks. So the window is actually at the outer face of the facade. Yep. Uh, we could have used a flangeless window and set those mid wall, which could have worked for us as well. But we, we kind of like the easy flashing details of, uh, of setting those windows at the front. It kind of makes it more kind of quote unquote normal with a standard, uh, you know, American style nailing flange. We're using all uh, Dorkin products here. This is the Vent SA, which by the way is a vapor open 
uh, product. I think it's interesting how you guys are installing all those flashings, really now windows and everything on the ground mm -hmm. first. This was our first wall panel. We didn't do all that on this one, but now we've moved to that, right? We timed ourselves flashing this, and then we timed ourselves flashing on the ground. And in the time it took us to flash one window standing up, because you know you have to get on ladder, move mm -hmm. over, do all of that, we were able to flash full four full windows and install the windows on the ground. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I want to point out that this was uh, Monopoly style or perfect wall style, as Joe Schiebrich says, meaning all the insulation is outboard of our WRB and our air bearer. And this peel and stick Delta Vent SA is both stopping all the air from blowing into the building. It's also our last line of defense for water on the building. We're using all their accessories, this blue Delta flashing, the red tape, which is Delta multiband. Uh, we also have taped between the panel and the concrete foundation at the bottom. And then we're using full rock wool on the whole outside of the building. Uh, I've heard Joe Stiebrick say, you know, if you were cold, would you stuff insulation in between your ribs or would you put a big coat on? And that's what we've done on this job is we put a, we put a good raincoat on, right? This is our uh, jacket that's made from Gore-Tex, so to speak. Uh, and then outboard of that, we put a nice uh, insulation layer. You know, we put our goose down coat on and that's what our rock roll comfort board is doing here. And then for maximum durability, we've screwed on this rain screen detail, which also happens to be plywood. It's <laughs> LVL, it's yeah. Pretty beefy. Yeah. Uh, and I also <laughs> like your kind of bug screen detail. Now we're, uh, we're on a ranch property outside of Austin, Texas. Uh, we're not just worried about uh, bugs getting in there, but there could be some. Snakes, scorpions, uh, yeah, rats. Rodents, yeah. whatever. So you actually went one step beyond what I've ever done before and put more like a hardware cloth on there. Yeah, so we have expanded metal on the outer shell. So that's that's the, the durable outer shell. And then we have an all-weather metal screen, and that goes all the way up and in. Yep, makes sense. So then when this section went up, and then you'll notice as we walk down here, we've got a, a break in the panel. He left his insulation off. And what are these screws that you're using here between this inch and a half those plywood and that column? Yeah. Those so are, that's a structural Simpson screw mm -hmm. as well. Those those screws are there are, are the five inch screws. And so this is the same type of screw we'd use to put a ledger board on a house mm -hmm. uh, for a deck project. This is a structural screw. It's got a big fat washer head. Uh, I'll actually put the name below as we're talking about it. I can't remember the exact product name. But the idea now is these two plywood uh, wall sections are joined at the column structurally. And you've done some pretty serious wind load tests in the computer model mm -hmm. on this too, right? Yeah, yeah. The engineers have modeled it to 170 miles an hour. This thing's not going anywhere. 170 is crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> serious. Okay, now let's walk this way, guys. Uh, around the building because I want to kind of show you the inside and this is a this is a building trend that I got to say takes a minute to wrap your mind around the construction here it's not uh, it doesn't kind of compute in our typical residential brains as to what's happening here so you can see we've wrapped the building around here and this corner of the building is for the most part complete but how now you can kind of see that progress so here's our bottom plate right here. Here's where those anchors go in. Yep, so we put these Simpson uh, Titan HD screws into the anchor later rather than using J-bolts. Uh, these are a drilled product. And then this is also a Simpson uh, plate that's spreading that load. And the spacing on these was designed by the engineer as well, so we knew exactly how much hold down power. And then Trent, what's going on with this bad boy? So that's an embed that goes to the hold downs. So there's a, there's a bracket that sits above that and tightens down to this. So this, this sinks into the slab six inches gotcha. and, it's, and it's sealed with a epoxy. Okay, so that's epoxied in. We'll slide that anchor over there by Simpson. That'll get screwed down and that's gonna hold that column mm -hmm. down to the foundation as well. And then if you come around this way, you can kind of see there's really no traditional two by interior framing. It's still the same system where we've got on some interior walls, we've got that same inch and a half plywood mm -hmm. uh, that's being used on the outside of the structure. Same type of column. This is an all plywood column. This looks to be kind of four by six-ish. Uh, and then you'll also notice that he's using regular kind of Simpson hold down hardware. Nothing super, nothing custom fabricated here, nothing special uh, right out of the Simpson catalog. The engineer helped us spec all those. 
And then what's happening with these cross braces? Are these doing anything structurally for us? No, right? those are there because the, the client didn't want to see any of the wires or, or pipes. Yeah. So um, that's why they're held off. There's a three inch gap at the back. Yep. And so everything will fit right, right behind that and then we'll be able to nail our, our, our paneling to the front. So we'll in other screw words, our, our paneling to the front. No nails. Yeah. So in other words, there's there's no drywall on this project unless we decide to do some later. But it's not intended at this moment. So Trent's got this uh, kind of like two by four plywood piece on here, uh, just as a backer. And then we're going to come in and add some half inch plywood to make a, a continuous backer and some and eighth inch ply or be, so. It'll be a quarter inch in this area. Quarter it'll be a quarter inch maple veneer. Gotcha. So we'll have this beautiful kind of maple interior that we can at this moment we're thinking that we're probably gonna since the windows came black we're gonna do an extension jam on the inside out of some trim we'll paint that black or kind of uh black white wash. wash it black wash it the rest of the walls are probably going to be whitewashed in here but you could do whatever you want i mean this plywood's very high grade one of the finishes that we looked at was putting a traditional um a, dry, a drywall texture on a knockdown and it yeah. looks just like drywall yeah i love it Trent, there's so many other details. There's much more to go here. We got a lot more to talk about. But on this video, we thought we'd give these guys a bit of a flavor for Mass Ply sneak Light. Peek. Uh, sneak peek. Sneak <laughs> peek of Mass Ply Light as, you, as you've coined it. So stay tuned for more from our Barn Dominium Mass Ply Light. I'll put a link in the description to uh, Trent's company, Timber Builder. Uh, and you should also go follow these guys on Instagram. They're posting pics all the time from this job site. This is a small project uh, for their company. They're used to doing very large projects. Yeah. Uh, so if you're interested in working with these guys, I'll put a link in the description too. Great work, dude. Keep it up. Thank you. We've got a lot more to go here from the Barn Dominium Mass Ply Light mm -hmm. job. Hit that subscribe button below, guys. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey, Trent, let's give these guys a quick sneak peek of okay. what we've got coming up on future episodes here. We've got platform construction, which is columns and beams and wall panels and trusses and we got a second floor going on here we, we have a second floor mezzanine panels we're going to fly in big, we're going to talk through some of the details big on beams. siding uh, we're going to be using diamond coat siding mm -hmm. on this project my first time using them we're going to talk through all the details on diamond coat mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get into a few more details on the exterior rock wool and also some air sealing details between the roof and the wall and also on future episodes i'm going to see if i can get trent to reveal some costs on this project too so if you're interested in doing one of these get kind of a good sense for what's what's a project like this cost be ready to be surprised this is a super fun project guys we'll see y'all later